Hello, welcome to TFLP Microcasters. Uh, we're live tonight and we are joined by a very special guest. Image Optimus. Oh, oh, you thought we were talking about you, Rob? <clears throat> I'm actually sick today. I've been slowly losing my voice all day. And uh, so, yeah, it's a great night to do a podcast, but, you know. I, I have my tea, and we'll get through it. It'll be all right. How, how do you get sick? Like, you don't see anyone. My wife literally said the same thing. She's like, how have you contracted anything? I've been a hermit for a solid year now, but here we are. Yeah, I, I was just thinking that. I was like, I really have not gotten sick in the last year, and that's kind of nice. I don't think I've been sick either. I can't remember anything. But I'm also a super hermit, so like hermit level seven. Anything either. Like I feel fine. It's just yesterday my throat was a little sore, but I thought it was fine. And then today, the voice has slowly been going. So I've I've dropped like I've dropped an octave. <clears throat> is, is it the cold weather there in in Nashville or Tennessee, wherever I, you're at? Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. Everything's coated in ice, I can tell you that. But, I mean, we have heat. Lots of fun. Like, you know, knock on wood, we've kept our power. Not every, all of my friends in Tennessee have, but, so. We, uh, we lost power for, like, 45 minutes, <clears throat> so, today, yeah. but some other people lost yeah, it for today. longer. I know you lost yours, I think, <laughs> what, for, like, a couple hours yesterday, Anna? It was a little over an hour. It wasn't terrible. It was just that initial, like, not knowing why it happened, which was very stressful. Yeah. Yeah, My mine was planned, but I know some other people have had power out for, like, longer, and it's like, oh, when is it going to come back on? Who knows? I was uh, making sure to wrap all my Transformers in blankets so that they would stay warm in case the heat didn't come back on. <laughs> there you go. There's a lot of work. There's a lot of them. So tonight uh, we're uh, we're doing M the new MMC Optus Plexus or something. What is it? Yeah, Optus Plexus. Optus Plexus. I thought it was Plexus because that made sense, but then it was Plexus. Uh, I think I tainted you by calling it Optimus Flexus because it's an expensive figure. <laughs> but there you go. Oh, hey, uh, Ron, Ron in the chat says that you should do, uh, do the Rick method. Uh, I don't know if you noticed last night. Did you did you watch the show, Rob? I did this morning, yes. Yeah, so you, you could, uh, you know, it, it, we hear that helps with the sore throat, so. Literally nothing is solved by do what Rick did. So <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and skate on by that one. That, that is Rob. true. Very good insight. <laughs> That, that is true. Here is, so. You heard it first. Um, so tonight, we're trying to decide, is this new MMC Optimus, like, the figure of the year or the best figure ever? Right? So, so I'm, I'm shocked <laughs> you said that, because this thing is basically a piece of crap. I'm really surprised MMC put this out. <laughs> it is just so <laughs> shitty. It barely articulates. Like, that's it. The head's a silver chrome block i this thing well is i mean that's what you get with third know. party so <laughs> this is a cake topper knockoff that a co-worker gave me six years ago because i was the transformer guy in the office <laughs> and I've kept awesome. it. it's i've transformed this thing probably a hundred times it hasn't broke it yet or turned to dust but <laughs> there you go good job for it yeah So, so yeah, Rob got this in, and I know everyone has been, like, raving about this figure and saying how great it is. And then I talked to you, I think, I don't know if it was last week or whatever, when you finally got it in, and you're like, you're like, eh, like, it's good. But, so, yeah, I don't know if, if you want to kind of go over any of that yeah. stuff or if we want to get into the review. I mean, it is definitely a very good figure, but it was so overhyped that there's no way it would have ever matched. Right. 
You know what I mean? Like, I watched, I think, like, two reviews online for it, you know, and, like, saw some people in, on Facebook or on the forum threads and just literally everybody raving about it before it even came out. They sent out a bunch of review samples to where, like, one YouTube reviewer that I sometimes watch for uh, Marvel Legends reviews, they had a copy of it. MMC sent it to them. Um, you know, and that's just really where they're promoting, you know, kind of the whole action figure aspect of it, which it definitely has in spades. Like, there's, you know, it's as articulated as pretty much any action figure you'll find. Um, you know, in some places a little more, maybe you know, a few things a little less, like the, if you got to get nitpicky, like the butterfly joints aren't great because his, like, half boobs kind of run into it a bit. Like, it's there, you know. Right. You know, the joint's there. And again, that's such a minor nitpick. I'm just pointing it out. You, you know, like that's the level you're at of nitpicking with it. Is, I I kind of feel yeah. like it's it's a little bit of, you know, if you're into the MMC figures and, pla- you know, Planet X and all that kind of stuff, like you'll get this in hand and be like, oh, oh, wow. Like they took a step, like the next step kind of thing. Whereas like if you're a like masterpiece collector like if you're you know say i've i have not seen the new mp what is it 44 yeah um optimus or whatever like i i have not held that in my hands yet um like you know that's such a different figure and i just wonder like some of that that after experiencing that figure and all the accessories and, and things like that and the paint like that's what this is a different figure because there's not that same level of paint that like you know that that figure had on it. Yeah, um, because of MP44, I can't say I've never seen this articulation before in a Transformer. You, you right. know that doesn't mean this doesn't have an amazing level of articulation because it does. We don't see this in Transformer figures outside of MP and some third party releases. Not not all of them like. If you watch like our 3P year in review, like I kind of mentioned how like Fans Toys has been cheating some articulation lately for what you expect from that line. It's not like it's bad other than a case or two, but it's like, you don't have this? How do you not have this? This is an expensive ass figure. How do you not, you know? So, you know, that aside, like, you know, this, the hips go way up, you know, which is not something you see a lot. The hip panels kind of slide up there's a joint inside there's a bar um which is kind of interesting to how it gets out of the way but then it comes back and it still looks nice and of course you know he has the super deep knee bends that mp44 you know happily promoted um you know like so the the one thing i'll say the, the one thing i'll say in general like the refreshing thing for mmc is like this figure is 110 dollars right or 120 I think it's one something like that. I can't remember. It, it, it's somewhere around that, but like it's pretty much the cost of like these larger scale MMC figures. The thing that's impressive to me is is I feel like this offers a lot bit better value for like their former figures that have come out, and, and so like I'm so used to now of all of these you know, third party and MP figures or whatever that they're like, Oh, surprise. Like, you know, this figure that used to be, you know, whatever, $80 is now $120 or this figure that used to be a hundred dollars is now $160. So that's the thing I think is impressive to me that they packed all this in and didn't like raise the price on it. I think some of that is probably due to, and you know, it's one of those, all we can do is speculate. You know, we don't have the books in front of us, but because it's an Optimus Prime figure, I suspect this was made in a lot larger quantities than, you know, like the last few dudes from the DJD were. And they hyped it up a bunch. Like I said, they sent review copies to action figure people. I haven't seen that from a third party transformer company before. Um, So I think they either expected or did get really good sales on this. I, Again, I don't know, but I think that probably allowed them to really lower the price. Like, you know, compared to what it might be if it had a production run of whatever the large DJD dudes had. You know, where this probably would have been more like a 160, a 180 toy in, you know, in 2021 dollars. Like, if you're following, like, the Super 7 stuff, you know, where Brian has talked about how 
costs just went up a lot in China for him, and that's, you know, <clears throat> that's going to flow to us. You know, he said you can probably start to see that across the industry. Um, but I think because it's a prime figure, I think it helped us a lot. I don't expect to see that like when Ron comes out at all. So I think Ron will be yeah. pricier without this level of engineering. Not, not that well, I'm preemptively complaining. I'll take wrong at honestly any price they can rip me off, but I'm fine with it. I, I'm just curious though, like, you know, we had heard that uh, MMC was planning on kind of like a more masterpiece level, like IDW figures. Um, this is from a couple years ago. And I'm, I'm curious if like, this is kind of the plan that they're planning on doing. Like this is kind of the one, you know, starting it off and then they're, you know, planning on releasing more. I'm, that's my hope. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll see whether or not that actually happens or not. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, you know, you mentioned like, you know, if we start talking about some of the details of this, MMC isn't known for painting their figures. Um, like, and I don't necessarily mean that in a bad way. Like they give it the paint it needs, but they use large sections of just colored plastic when they can. Um, right. this guy has quite a bit of paint, like, you know, all of his leg bits and waist bits and the silver bits on his arms, you know, all that's shiny. I assume that's paint. Um, and then, like, you know, all the little blue highlights and the silver highlights are there. I mean, you know, the silver on those shins is there. And I don't know how you feel about yours, Lucas, but, like, the red feels like it's painted. I d it isn't. I I'm pretty sure it's not. But it has a finish to it yeah. or a plastic quality to it that MMC doesn't usually have, and it's a really nice plastic. I like, compare that, compare that to the blue on the legs. The blue on the legs feels isn't as impressive. The blue legs just seem like your typical blue plastic, you know. Um, and as some of you may know, like plastic isn't created equal. There's a whole bunch of different ways to make plastic and different mixtures and ingredients, and that's why you can kind of tell the difference between a Hasbro product, an MMC product, a Fans Toys product, you know, like they all have different mixtures that they use in their plastic. Um, and that's why they all have that different feel to it. So there's something with, it feels like to me, the red plastic versus, again, like the blue plastic, which just seems standard. Um, but it, it makes it so that even though this isn't, you know, painted the way a masterpiece figure would be, um, it has a really nice finish to it overall and it really works. Um, right. If they're going for that masterpiece level, um, one of the detriments, I think, from like a typical MMC fan might find is that I didn't find the transformation as fun. It does a few neat things, which, you know, we'll get into in, in a little bit. Um, but like all the other MMC stuff, I've always kind of lauded how they get the aesthetics pulled off so well with generally pretty simple transformations, to be honest. Like even the big dudes. You know they're simple, and they're like most of their movements are big. They're obvious movements. I, they're intuitive. Um, but I, I feel like for the most part, and again, I guess I did watch a, a you know like a review video since they sent it out ahead of time. Um, so I, I do think there's maybe a couple parts that I you know would have struggled through um, had I not seen a video. But I mean, I felt like it was pretty intuitive. Uh, you know, getting them. Uh, between modes like I didn't I didn't think it was like hard or anything and there was no part where mm. I was like oh this is like you know whatever this is gonna break or you know whatever like you know that type of thing either it was it's super sturdy than, what's that it's more complex than most of their figures right because like, I know yes. like the reform yeah. and stuff I have has all been like it, it does a good job of transforming but it's not as complex as if it was made by a different company. You know, like every other third party I've bought always feels more unnecessarily complex, where MMC stuff always feels like minimally complex. Yeah, and I think that's the point I'm trying to get across, is that it's a step above or more complex than what you would know. It doesn't mean it's bad, because it's not bad, but it it is notably a little more frustrating than normal. That doesn't mean it's actually frustrating. Like. Yeah, getting it like I would say I would point out like his backpack, it compacts up really nice. It looks really good, but necessarily getting it all arranged in there wasn't very intuitive. And I kind of just kind of kept fiddling until stuff finally went together. 
yeah. <laughs> you know, like that part was just kind of a little clunky. Um, and some of the beginning stages, like, you know, getting parts to pop apart to get it started. I didn't enjoy that either. Um, yeah. And, and that's something that a lot of toys have, you know, especially in the third party world. I'm very used to getting some. It's like, how do you get this thing started? And you got to figure out where to apply pressure to pop it apart. And I'm not used to that with MFC. And that's, again, it's not at all bad. Like I said, this is a very good figure. Um, but if it might surprise somebody coming into this. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, and I would agree with you, you know, definitely that the parts you you talked about, like just <clears throat> kind of starting it off and then like arranging the backpack is, is a little bit tricky. But like, again, it was like, you know, two tricky parts and, and, and whatever. Whereas I feel like, you know, we've all had those figures where they explode apart and you're like, what the hell do I do next? And you're like sitting there, like combing through the instructions or like, you know, pausing the video, you know, second yeah. by second to try to figure out how it is to in do something. Absolutely no way. X trans bots, Minnesota trailer, <laughs> which was one of the worst things <laughs> it's, I mean, this still wasn't as bad as fans projects, old, Minnesota trailer, which you know, Christian remembers that. Most of us, if you've been in the, the transforming <laughs> world for 10 years or more, I did not need remember. those flashbacks, Rob. That thing is terrible. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. Um, a lot of its problem, honestly, is just because it's so bulky, it's gangly trying to mess with it, and it gets heavy. I wish it snapped apart to do sections. So, anyways. It's I like how Rob's like just like casually flexing like other figures. He's like, it's not like the Xbox Transbots uh, Minasaur, which I, I, <laughs> I have dropped have an it. extra like three hundred dollars on his trailer. <laughs> Two hundred, I'll have you know from Show Z. Um, I just, it's the only other Transformer I have next to me, and because hey. it took me about a week and a half to transform it. <laughs> you know, working on a little here, a little there during some meetings. <laughs> you know. So this a is couple the guy of things. who used to host the iBot stuff show. And he hasn't had it in a while, and I've just let him get it out of his system. That's right, I haven't talked about toys in a while. <laughs> <laughs> just gotta let it all loose. <clears throat> so, uh, should I go over some of my nitpicks? I, well, before we do that, I was going to say a couple of the things I think that impress people is there's a there's a couple of things that we have not really seen in um, like third party, or at least I haven't seen with like a lot of the figures that that I've reviewed or like looked at and whatever is. And one of them is the hip joints, I think, is like whatever this hip joint is cool. for the hips is not something that I've seen in a... Um, I think some people are saying it's kind of more of a Gundam type of thing, but like this joint here, like the hips kind of like go like up and down, like it's like a they sliding rock joint. Down. The they hip is down. on a rotational piece. The hip itself is, so it can go down an extra notch, mm -hmm. so that it can get extra movement out of it. Now, yes. which means you know, if you don't push it back up when he's in standing. It makes him look like he's got long leg boys. You know, he looks a little yeah. silly that way. But that's that's your own fault. You just wrote. But I think it's like one of those things. And that it moves depending, super easy. The thing that I kind of like about that is, is depending on what you think the height scale of Optimus, you can kind of set them to a different height. You know, too, if you like that. The one thing that I do like as well is, is that he has ratchets in his hips, but like the ratchets are actually like pretty small ratchets. And so, like, even though, like, there's ratchets, and so the, the legs are solid, like, they're these soft, and so you can get, like, those points in between and still get good poses. Because, like, I would always hate it where, like, they would either do ball joints or whatever where, like, they would wear out or whatever, or universals or something like that. Or if they put ratchets in, like, one position of it would be, like, way out there. So it's like you either, it's like your pose is either this or this. Yeah. And there's, like, no in-between. Whereas this, like, has a lot of ratchets. And so that's the thing that I really like about this this figure, and, that it's... Um... And the hip joints in that movement with the ratchets, they also hold the positions in between the ratchets really well. So it's kind of... I mean, yes. it's both friction and ratchets, you know? So, like, you're, you're really good there. He poses really well. And because there's no die cast in here, you know, he can handle the weight of his limbs really well. And he can handle weird poses. He's easy to balance. Things of that nature. Like, and, he's and the sturdy. Other thing, 
<laughs> like, I was just going to say, too, like, I feel like um, this figure kind of reminds me of, like, some of the 3A figures that have come out um, or, uh, or Flame Toys or whatever, but, like, it's a transforming figure. And, the, like, the thing that I like is, like, the sculpt, like, it's it doesn't really get broken up by, like, when you articulate him. Like, so many other figures, like, I feel like that the waist joint, like, when you do that, like, you know, whatever, bending over pose, it just makes him look like crap. And I don't think it's quite as bad with this figure as, like, some of the other ones. Again, I think you have to nitpick it to argue against that. Like, like you'd have to look at the elbow. So the elbows are double jointed. And it's like, oh, they look good. But then you go there and it's like, oh, it's gone. And it's hollow up in there. But, I mean, you're having to look for it at that point, you know? You can slightly change how you're exercising the double elbow and now it's not broken up anymore. Yeah. You know, only, so like it's it's really nice. The only thing that I would say is 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 like you said, like I wish there was just a little more articulation in um the butterfly. upper arms. Like in like you said, that butterfly joint. Like if there was a way that you could like bring that forward, um like that's that's really my like one <clears throat> nitpick because like this like this shoulder joint here like doesn't you know, it only rotates or whatever. It doesn't, like, go forward. Like, I almost kind of want the shoulder to, to to actually, like, rotate, too. Well, see, that's why you have to go Masterpiece RC route and start his chest down at his stomach. And you <laughs> to fly across. There you go. <laughs> well, if all Transformers looked like that, that should be, like, you know, those arts people make of Marvel characters, the men characters, and the women poses. They should start making art of man transformers with their chests too low. That would make me happy and disgusted. <laughs> so one of my favorite little bits, we've seen this a little, a little here and there, and I know Lucas was about to talk about it. Is the knee joints are fun. They, yeah. the legs have a gray piece that come out, and his shins separate in, in half, and you pinch around this piece here. Yeah, so that when you bend. There's like some pipes that continually connect and they rotate up and down as it goes. And it's just one of those fun things to see, to see it as it articulates and to see them stretch and, and go with it. And it's just, it's fun. It's, as Lucas was saying, you know, it keeps the sculpt looking cohesive as you're articulating it, um, which is really neat. And it's a small thing, but it's really fun. Yeah. It's like, I mean, that's that. <laughs> And again, I mean, that's what, like, some of the third-party optimists, like the MP ones, like, the knees would totally do that. Like, when you bit the knee, or I mean, a lot of figures do that, where it just, it looks weird. And mm -hmm. whereas this, I feel like the way, the way that they did it, where the, like, kneecap is kind of higher, and then they put those pipes like that, it doesn't, like, when you're articulating the knee, it, it doesn't, you know, break it up. And uh, Lucas has touched on the waist, but... You know, not only do you have, you know, a really nice ab crunch, um, he also gets a side waggle, a really nice side waggle, and it's double jointed. So there's one at the waist, and then there's another one at the chest where it meets the rib cage. So you get two spots, and you can kind of squish it down, or you can kind of stretch it up a bit to get it out there a little more. It's more obvious in hand, um, but it's it's so articulated. I think it's wrong for Anna to not buy this. I was going to say, like, it has this little joint. Like, so the, what was it? The, uh, oh, gosh. Magic square. The magic square, like, where that piece is in the waist, you know, like, like that. Like, this piece is a little bit higher. And, but, like, by doing it that way, it hides it a little bit better. It than looks the less way... bizarro. <clears throat> yes. So it still has, like, a little bit of the uh, waist like articulation that you can do. Yeah, that's exciting. You know, I, I agree with you entirely, Rob, that when I look at that figure, I'm like, wow, that is a figure I would like to play with. And it's one thing that you two have not talked about yet that really pulls me in, and it's this. Oh, the oh, hands, yeah. yeah. We haven't talked about that yet. Okay, so yeah, I, I want to say yeah. I normally, and, and I'm curious to see what you say about these hands, Rob, but, like, I usually hate articulated hands, like, with a passion. Like, every single KFC figure that has had these things um, or uh, unique toys and whatever, like, I've just hated them because I feel like that the fingers always pop off and, 
they're not all that strong. I feel like that in like, I don't necessarily know that I need this, but I think that they've done a much better job with it. Um, to where the, I feel like the joints are a lot stronger. Um, and, um, it, it just feels like it's put together a lot better. If you don't need those, you can just bring them over to my house and just leave them on the porch. I'll take the hands. I don't even need the figure. I just want the hands. The hands are awesome. Like, I agree with everything Lucas said. You know, I have a lot of ex-trans bots and fans, toys that have the highly articulated hands. You know, and I've had a couple cases where, like, a fingertip goes flying and you got to find it and try to slot it back in there. And what's funny is, looking at the design of this, it doesn't look any different than how the other ones do that. But these hold together really, really well, which means one's either about to break or go flying off somewhere. Um, but they're, I don't know, they've definitely done it better than anyone else has. Um, combined with all of the joints at the knuckle where it meets the hand, they're not in a line together. They're in a semicircle, which is why you're able to do the big hand splay like that. Like that is actually articulating down at the knuckle. It's not like it's up and then going to the side the way you would see it on those other ones. And it's it's a lot of little tweaks like that that really uh, bring it home, you know, especially yeah. with the hands. They're super expressive. Yeah. That excites and me. I what do you think about your hands? It. He says thumbs up. He likes them. I, I, I was going to say, too, just this wrist joint as well, like just the articulation that you have in that where, like, you can, you know, move it around and then like back and forth. I don't know. It just, it seems like it's like another step up from like a lot of other stuff I've handled. You can tell I'm digging the toy's articulation. Pull. If I'm watching you play with it, I'm trying to mimic the articulation of my own body to be like, Oh, it's just like a real person. Yep. Um, so if I had to nitpick, the hand can't hold the sword because wrists need to bend that way if you have a sword and most action figures forget that even if they give the character with a sword although sometimes they will like there's i have some link figures and they give alternate hands for the swords they have it that way so if you want to put a sword in this hand he's not going to be able to point the sword down it's worthless don't buy it it's the worst figure ever the sword <laughs> no <laughs> um but if he, he did if he did, uh, buy George. You're talking about the sword he doesn't have. <laughs> I'm, I'm stretching here. Um, he actually has a lot of accessories. Um, he has a, an alternate head. He has four guns. Um, He's got. Hey, hey, ones. Rob. I, I do want to mention that alternate head is a uh, Planet Steel Express exclusive. So oh. if you're a chump like some of us, you don't get an extra head. Why would you buy MMC figures not from Planet Still Express? I don't know, man. I just buy them from like the US retailers. But the like Stop. all the other stuff other than the alternate head is okay. you get like if you buy it from BBTS or whoever. Yeah. So he's got four guns. He's got two of his gray blasters and two of them in black, which is neat. Um, and we haven't shown it yet. This part I think is a nitpick in that an E for effort guys, I don't think it worked out too well. And that is, of course, because he's an Optimus Prime. What does he have to have in his chest? A Matrix. And so you're like, yeah, the Matrix looks good. It looks fine. It's got like a little shelf to kind of help pop it out. Um, but because there's no room for the handles, the handles detach from it. And so I can pop them on. And the handles peg on to the side here. And it's just crappy. It doesn't look good. And, like, earlier in the episode, one fell off again. Like, they don't stick on there well. Um, it's one of those... It's supposed to be a Ryan Pax. It's fine if he doesn't have a Matrix IMO. So, so it's one of... They didn't Rob, need I to actually, do it. And it didn't feel it was I actually really found a better storage spot for the for the handles. The trash? In a drawer? <laughs> no. In a bag? No. Like, in, in this box right here. In the here. box. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, so, you know, but I like, mean, I, I agree with you. I I don't know that I really care that much. Like, I mean, yeah. for the for the one time that I'm going to display him with his matrix for a picture or whatever kind of thing, you know, yeah. like I'm just going to leave him in the box. I'll pull them back out of the box whenever I need them, and um, you know. 
Yeah, yeah. I've already put it back, and I'll probably never pull it out again. It's one of those again. I'm nitpicking a feature I don't even think it needs. So whatever, right? Yeah. I mean, um, it's nice that I guess that they put the the matrix in there, you know, just to just to have it. Um, it's also kind of hard to get that chest open um, yeah. when he's when he's transformed in robot mode. Like it's actually it's very easy to do when he's in his vehicle mode, um, but like these like these windows or whatever in vehicle mode like push back. Um, and so you, it's easier to, to get the clearance, but like when he's in robot mode, it's kind of hard to, to get at it. And they've, they've tried to help with that. Like there are little tabs at the top here to give you something to grab onto with your fingernail. Like that's what they're there for is to help you yeah. pop it open. Um, but that's it's still nice. kind of a, a little bit of a fight. Can um, you show off the extra head, Rob? Nick is asking no. about it. No, uh, it's in the <laughs> box in the garage. And it's like a gajillion degrees under zero in the garage. <laughs> well, um, thanks. You mentioned this extra head and then don't even show it off. So No, I, I put them away. I can show you X-Transbot's Minasaur again. That's the only other thing I got here. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, the regular, than... the regular head looks pretty nice, and it has a good amount of articulation. It's on, like, an extra little, like, neck piece, I guess, that, like, kind of props yeah. it up. So then you can get, like, full articulation. Like, you, you can look down, you can look up, side to side, you know. All, all that articulation you always wish that you had in a head, like, you have that on this. Yeah. Um, I don't like his feet. They're small. Like, that's probably, like, the strongest sculpt-wise nitpick I have is just that he just has tiny little feet, in my opinion. Like, you know, his calf is this wide, and then his foot is that wide. And it's not like it's large, wider in the back or anything. Again, it's not a big deal. <laughs> it's small feet. Um, but it is a it is a thing. It's, again, when a figure was overhyped so much, I immediately, all the flaws jumped out at me. You know, and it it's not a major deal. They articulate really well. Like, you know, you can, you can kind of stretch them out a bit right, to get toes. more clearance. Yeah. So you can do a lot with them, but they're just small. But it's not like it hurts with this bounce. that out because yeah. I, I would definitely have them tilted all the time so they would stand out more so they drive me more crazy. Yeah. It's an important thing to consider. Yep. Like the only thing I would say about the feet, like the only reason I would care is the fact that like it's hard to get him posed on one foot. He's very well balanced, but like, like you kind of need that extra foot just to – you know, just to be down on the ground. Whereas I think if his feet were just slightly wider, you could probably pull it off with just like a, you know, whatever running without, you know, with one leg in the air kind of thing. My camera or not? Can't tell what I'm. Uh, Sorry, what what is this? I was I have him doing a high kick. There he is. Yeah. Oh yeah oh. yeah. Okay. No. Well, there you go. Yeah. 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 So like. It works. You can't do that with a whole lot of figures, but if you had a water well, footed, most of the time we just saw your handheld Transformers game that you're so proud of. Ugh, said I'm gonna divorce my wife over it. I actually beat it. <laughs> I beat what I cut game? Open the plastic from the bottom so I can put it back in the package, so it'll mm. look nice because at least it's got the card art, you know. But yeah, there's four levels on it, and I beat it. Hooray! It's wow, terrible. good job. No, I was mad at myself. That's an accomplishment. We're really proud of you. We should have a celebration show. Um, the yeah. other thing I'd say is is that um, like everything is is a little bit tight. Like it's not bad, and I mean it like works itself out. Like as you're <clears> messing <throat> with it, um, I would rather it be tighter than lo like like to me. I don't feel like anything is is so tight it's gonna break. Um, but it is I would rather it be sturdy. tighter. Yeah, I, I'd rather it be tighter um, because, like, if you're messing with it a whole lot, like, you don't want everything to, like, all the joints to wear out and whatnot, so. Yeah, that's that's the last nitpick I had is that some of the joints are way too tight, which is, that played into a lot of the reason I didn't enjoy transforming it is because mm -hmm. you have to use so much force to constantly bend pieces. But because I was applying so much force that showed me how robust this thing is i mean it's it never at any time i felt it was brittle someone's gonna snap someone's gonna break it all it's super well made with really nice plastic but like 
the knees are both super tight on mine, um, especially that one. And then the shoulders, like if I try to you yeah. know, do that motion, it's just going to raise up there because all the tension is in the shoulder. Now, if I hold it, I can do it. Yeah. But it's, you know, you got to work it around. And it's kind of hard to do because there's so much art- articulation in this armature here. Um, it's a case of, like, I wanted to leave it as it was until we talked about it on the show, but I'm probably going to drop some shock oil in there, some silicone shock mm-hmm. oil. You can get a, a bottle for, like, five, six bucks on Amazon. It's one of those things I say, I think Transformer Collector should have on your shelf. Like that, along with Future. some full. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe a little bit of super glue. You know, maybe some clue tips or sorry, Q tips and some goo gone. Um, you know, it's like that stuff you should have playing with your toys, and you should add that to the list. So I'm going to drop some of that probably in the knees and the shoulders, and then it'll be fine. Um, but they're super tight, which again, better than the alternative, but you know, it's notable. It can make it kind of a little tough when you're messing with it, but then it holds its spots really well. It holds its poses super well. I don't know. The one thing about this figure I'd say, like, overall is is that I'm usually not the person that likes to mess around with my figures and articulate them in weird ways and, and all that type of thing. Whereas, like, this is one of the first figures I've at least had in a while where I want to put in all kinds of crazy poses. Because I'm, I'm, like, trying to see what the articulation can do, almost. You know, just because it's so crazy. Um, and uh, I, I really enjoyed it. And, and so that's that's the thing. I felt like Anna over there, like, actually... And like, I have to say, it, felt, it was actually really nice when you were, like, showing us your figure and you actually put in a bunch of, like, creative poses. And I was like, this is so cool to see Lucas actually, like, getting play about you out of his toy. Yeah, normally that so many awesome happen. toys. You gotta play with them. Yeah. It's... If you get a chance to have it in hand, Anna... And it's sold out by then. I think you will be upset with yourself. <laughs> it, you know, just given how much you know, you talk about how you you want things to be posable all the time. Well, you want things to have character. Optimus, Rob. I don't need more Optimi. Well, the, the are, thing for me not is is that like you know I have a decent size MMC collection and Planet X and things like that, and. The Optimus is like one thing that was always kind of missing, and like I, uh, what was it, the Generation Toy, I think that they had their Optimus, which looks really good. Yes. Um, but Film like the articulation world. is lacking on that one. Um, I mean, that's also how many years old? You right. know, both the Generation Toy and the Toy World ones that are more of the standard IDW one. Is so, he right. from a part of the ID, IDW series I haven't even read yes. though? Yeah. This is how he looked like back in the past in the IDW series. Like this is an IDW figure, it, you know. It's just a notch up in terms of you know, kind of quality, articulation, and all that crap we've been. Right, doing. right. My question is just like, will I ever even read stories that have this design of Optimus in them? No, because you don't read good stories. Yeah, I about. I mean, I think I passed out and blacked out for five minutes when I heard the reading club was just not reading more than meets the eye. I we just, are. Oh, I heard you weren't, and you were just reading Robots in Disguise, which I like Robots in Disguise. Course. Okay. Robots in Disguise is fine, but more than meets the eye is like a gajillion times better. I like uh, Robots in Disguise more, but I'm enjoying both. Okay. Good. I think that's what Anna was, was just saying, that she didn't really like more than meets the eye. And that she really enjoyed Robots in Disguise. Yeah. It was kind of the the thing. It's me. Which was like the opposite experience that I had where, you know, after season one of um, uh, Robots in Disguise, like it was really an effort on my part to get through those. You know what I mean? Just to, to, (laughs) to, to push the story forward. Whereas like more than meets the eye, I was like, oh, old friend. Like, I want to go ahead and, and read this next issue because, like, it was just, it was such a treat for me every week. And I was very upset, like, when, you know, Lost Light just wasn't quite the same. I guess there's spoilers. I probably shouldn't talk about Lost Light because they haven't gotten there in book club yet. But it was, like, there there was good parts to it, you know, but it just, it wasn't quite the same as. Yeah, the beginning of Lost Light was hard to keep my interest. 
you know, right. I can appreciate from a 10,000 foot view some of what the book was doing, but ultimately when when it's there on the page, I just wasn't as interested. Well, you know, it, it came back to in it. the end. Because if you liked it less, I'll probably like it more. Because you don't yeah, have you'll probably love like the new comics. Yeah. Like, yeah, like that's that probably that right. Anode, actually, Christian, just so you know. You, you you will absolutely adore Anode. You you think you like Nautica now? And, you know, it's <laughs> She's just so much better. I hate Anode. I cannot stand her. <laughs> I'm just indifferent. Like, I, I don't... Yeah. To that level, I don't but. think I'll like her as much as I like Nautica or anything because I can't relate to her. She's gonna be her, your favorite. Like, you know how I much do you like, like the Glyph? Part of her character, though. Like, you will you will love Anode way more than Glyph and That's Nautica combined. That's not happening combined. That's not because all the Glyph fiction I've had to make up in my own head, my deluded fantasies. Anode is just that much better for you. <laughs> wow. Because I, mean, I, I hate her that much more. I mean, it's there in the name, Anna Ode. It's an ode to Anna, Anna Ode. Yeah. It's made just for you. And Catherine confirms true, that uh, <laughs> that you will love Anna. So, Ugh, although if we hype personality, she could be right. If we right. hype it up enough, then she won't like it. It's kind of like again like this figure. <laughs> but go, going back to this figure, where the the hype kind of. So my question, Rob. I mean, obviously we've all had a lot of Optimus Primes. Like, you know, how would you put this on the scale of, of Optimus Prime? Like, Nick had asked earlier, like, does he have to go run out and get this immediately? He was talking like, about the alternate it... head. Oh, the alternate. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I'm, I'm going to pose that question then. Do I have to run out and get this immediately, or can I wait for a more fun repaint that I like? Um, so, I will note that I had the same feelings as Christian and Anna when this was announced. I mean, in, this, in that other group we're in. I think I, my, I even had, I was like, oh boy, another fucking prime, you know, it was just, I tuned out of it. Like I didn't even pay attention to it for a month when people, the hype train started going. And then after time I was like, wait a minute. Like once I got myself to look at it, I was like, oh wait, this is IDW prime. I was like, and it is articulated out the wazoo, which is something I appreciate a lot. Um, I was like, all right, you got me buying another Optimus prime. I was ready to be off of it. Um, the hype train is real. And so it's really hard for me to come back from getting off the hype train, right? Um, that said, like, it, if you like IDW Prime, if you like what MMC does, if you like robust, sturdy figures, if you like things that are super articulated, it's kind of a must in that regards. If you're like, I don't really care about a Cybertron version of Prime from IDW, then whatever. If you're like, you know, I don't care if it's a quality figure. Like, you know, if you're just like, like if all of those boxes have to be checked for you, you know, if, if one of them's not, you can probably, you know, you'll live because there's, there's a gajillion primes, right? But as far as Cybertron IDW Prime, like, it's not going to get any better than this. Period. I'll put my stake in the ground. You know, this is, they have, again, yeah, this is MP44 levels of articulation in an MMC line, which is, you know, one of my favorite third party companies, even though, you know, they don't do, they do their own thing, but you know, they always do it really well. And this is no, no exception. They set out to do something and they crushed it. But you know, if you, if you're just like, it's another prime and I just don't care, then, you know, I, I don't know if anything's ever going to change that for you. But if you get this in hand, you won't dislike it for what it is ever. You know, if you're still just bored by another prime, but I would say get rid of some other prime and keep this one instead, because <clears throat> like I I will say <clears throat> that it is the in my mind the pinnacle of MMC. So like every MMC figure that is a similar size to that, like I would take this over any of those. I think that you know some of the bigger members of the DJD that just came out, like those are more impressive just because they're big and and you know nice and whatnot. Um, but like this figure is just the like it has like there's there's really not a lot of bad things like other than like what Rob had mentioned kind of a few nitpicks and, and things like that. Um, but I, I just think that they've done a, a stellar job with that. I think that for me, it's like my perfect prime. I think that the um, 
the Make Toys uh, Cross Dimension Prime was like kind of like one of my favorite before, and you know this replaces you know that for me. Like that had its its issues and whatnot. Um, I think the one of the things I like too is is I just like the size of it um, compared to you know there's been a few you know figures like I said like that Generation Toy one that didn't have the articulation like the transformation wasn't as fun as like I you know even though we'd said mentioned that the uh, the transformation on this is is a little more complex like it's not as bad as like you know generation toy and some of those but like i i feel like if you're looking for a replacement for your hexatron was that it right hexatron was six shot or not hexatron i'm sorry the um what's the toy world one again something with an o orion is it orion yeah yeah i think so Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, like, if you're looking for a replacement of that or whatever, or just or cross dimension, you know, like the, those types of figures, like this is going to be like light years, you know, better than that. Um, so, I, I think that it's going to be hard to surpass this like prime. I think that you know, like we said, like MP. 44 is like it has that look the g1 look like this doesn't have that but like if you're not going for that like i i would i would just highly recommend this like i think that if you're starting an mmc collection or whatever like get this this could be the only mmc figure you ever get you know like you know what i mean just because it's prime but i mean it is definitely like probably the highest quality thing they've ever made and again, I love a lot of what MMC does, and I have a lot of MMC product. I still have their first product, which is their Steam Engine Optimus Prime. That is honestly a piece of junk. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that plastic um, on that was crap. Yes, the plastic was garbage. They obviously they figured it out, right? Um, I mean, I've been with MMC since the start, um, and this is as good as a thing they've done ever. I, I feel it, like it's, it's the same way of like Planet X. <clears throat> Where, you know, when they released the Death Source, you know, and you're up. like, yeah, you're like, holy crap, like Planet X can do this? Like, that's where I kind of feel like Planet X has always been good. They've right. always been very, they've been very consistent, very steady with what they do. And then they're like, oh, hey, we took it up a notch for this one. And which is why I'm even more excited about their Grimlock. <laughs> um, but the only thing I would disagree with Lucas on is like, I don't, even though this is so well done, there is a lot on my MMC IDW shelf I would not exchange out for simply because it is an Optimus Prime. And I'm bored of Optimus Prime. But, you know, I don't have a Cybertron or an IDW Cybertron Prime. Now I do, and it's amazing, right? Um, but, like, you know, like Chrome Dome isn't going anywhere. The DJD I would put above it just because they are so niche. No one else is going to do those characters. Right, you're like, oh, but we do Carb Dome. Those are not the same, you know. Um, and, you know, will MMC do a normal mode Prime at some point from IDW? I don't know, but um, even if they just stick with this, like this is really, really good. I'm bored of your dumb face, Phil. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> sure. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I, I think that that's kind of how. You know, however you want to look at it, that you're like, oh, I've got enough primes, or I want the ultimate prime kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, that that's kind of where I'm at with it, that I want the, like, you know, best version of a Chug Prime, or whatever, yeah. like, or a, a stylized Optimus Prime that I can get. Yeah. So, for me, personally, I would rather have this than to get the alternate version. But I think if, if like, Christian, like, if you have a you know, whatever, some other Optimus Prime that you're like, this is my Prime, you know, whatever, then, you know, wait for the Nemesis or wait for the, you know, Shattered Glass or however many other 500 repaints you that know, they're going to do. I keep thinking one. about it, and I, I don't think I've been sold on getting this version, but I do think I'd like a repaint. And what I keep seeing in my head is Magna Convoy, Ghostbusters, or Fire Guts. Okay. Fire See, I was going to ask you hot. to dream with oh. me. About what sort of weird so vein and then going to pull out for a convention because they're they're known for pulling out weird crap 
for convention. Yeah. So I'm hopeful we'll get something like even if it ends up something like <clears throat> weird, like the Batman that they did yeah. last year. Like I would be good with that just as an excuse. Yeah. Nick has said that he hopes they do a. Cool. Nick wants to see like a battle damaged variant, which yeah. that doesn't interest me. But you know that would obviously be I think a pretty easy sell for a lot of people. Have I'm, they ever done know, battle damage, it's... like for MMC? I don't think so. They usually go with just some completely other character. But I, th- I think I know how to condense it down to my thoughts on this. Is the only negative thing about it is that it's Optimus Prime. <laughs> that's that's it. It just as a character, it's kind of boring. You know, like if this level of quality was put on Chrome Dome, and I love the Chrome Dome figure, like holy crap, we would not be able to stop talking about it. You know, because that character that. means so much more to me than another Optimus Prime. Even though I love Optimus Prime, right? But I'm, I'm bored yeah. of you, buddy. It's me. Yeah. It's not you. Um, you know, like, yeah, that's that's the biggest knock. <laughs> so, and, and that's the thing for me is I am excited because it's Optimus Prime, and I'm like, you know what? I can kick all those other primes that I have to the curb. I mean, not. Obviously, the Hasbro ones, but like some of the third party ones and whatnot, um, you know, or I can feel b- uh, better about selling those that now I have this and I don't have to worry about, you know, some of those other ones and whatnot. So, um, yeah. And it definitely describes a big, like, um, a big schism in the fandom between like half of us are people who are tired of Optimus Prime and want anyone else. And then the other half of us are Optimus Prime collectors. So it's a it's an interesting little schism in the fandom. Because there's some people who just can't get enough of that damn red and blue truck guy. And there's just some of us who are like, I have so many red and blue truck guy. It's just... It's funny, our opinion on that, because, you know, at the start of the show, I was like, I think the reason the price is what it is, because I think they made a lot more because it's Optimus Prime. Right. And, you know, they, so they probably sold more, you know, um, I think more casual collectors that aren't like us, that aren't used to at least, even if we don't buy it, we know about the depths of the, to- the hobby. You know, we know like a lot of the weird crap and we, we dabble, if not swim in that weird crap. Um, I think those people are more like, like, oh, they did a prime. Well, I got to pick that up. Right. You know, if they just dabble right. in some of that stuff, like a prime is a track where they're like chromed them, like whatever. I think I don't even read that comic, you know. <laughs> so they just kind of peace out. So that's the other thing about the Prime thing. It's a big fan. Not only did it cause them to be cheaper, I think that's also caused us to have so many good Optimus Prime toys. Like you know, I own a decent amount of RC figures right now, right? Like, but like one of them is good. You know, maybe two <laughs> are actually good. But then I own, like, four Optimus Primes at the moment, and they're all, like, the best figure in their line. You know, an amazing Earthrise figure, an amazing Cyberverse Deluxe. It just, like, goes on. You know, the the Siege figure, I have a weird KO oversized version of it, but it's still one of the best Siege toys that was made. And it's just what keeps happening with him. It's annoying because you want the best toy in every series, but I don't want 90 Optimus Primes. Yeah, Yeah, I think... If you're bored by Optimus Prime, given MMC's history, I think there will be some interesting repaints that may more float your boat. So you can get the awesome toy, but in something that is more interesting to you than another yeah. Prime. For me, I I love my IDW collection that's growing. <clears throat> and so to me, I was like, oh, well, I guess I got to get it now. You know, like, I mean, you didn't have to put that much of a gun to my head. You know what I mean? Like, it was, <laughs> it was an easy sell. I was halfway there anyways. Um, yeah. And I don't have an IDW Prime at all right now. Like, I've thought about going back and picking up the Toy World one at some point, but you know. Ugh, I'm not a fan of that. It, it's okay, but I mean, if you specifically want that character, but it's just it's showing its age at this point. Yeah. Yeah. But so we'll see what what comes next. Now that, especially since Planet X is dipping into the IDW waters. Yeah. People like doing primes. <laughs> I wouldn't rule it's it fr- out yet. The one thing I'm kind of frustrated with them though is is like they're doing like the same characters the MMC is doing. So it's like Are they? Yeah, cuz uh MMC d- uh, is doing a Grimlock. Um they Are did they? Uh, 
Uh huh. They did Desaurus. MMC's doing the Desaurus. That, I feel like the Desaurus is a little different because MMC's doing that thing where they're trying to have both two versions of it out of one thing. So, like you know, it's G1 and it's IDW. You know, so Planet it's, X did that too, though. Did they? Yeah, they they did a G1 kit for Desaurus. Oh, that's right. They did a kit for it. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'm still Peter waiting show you. for that MMC. I've been waiting for that MMC since the Planet X came out because I was like, that looks so cool, but I want the MMC instead. And I stayed yeah. strong for like eight years or however how long it's been. I got mine for it was yours, wasn't it, Lucas? Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm happy with that purchase. I, I I keep forgetting that MMC has a Grimlock. Did that? Is it just been in like development hell? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they redesigned it. So, 2017 is the post on TFW. So what happened was, so 2017 was like kind of like where they used to do the thing where they would release two like kind of versions that like were essentially repaints of one another that like weren't really accurate to anything. And Oh, yeah. I remember they had that big like April Fool's thing where they put out a bunch of fake repaints of stuff. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. The they fake solicits. They've like every year, haven't they? They went they started, over. Was that the first year. year? Oh, okay. Yeah, like it was like ten repaints of something, and then and they looked really bad. <laughs> like mm. the joke was lost on me. But sorry, continue. But uh, but what I was gonna say is is that like at that point, like other companies started releasing like more accurate versions of the characters, and so and like a lot of people were complaining that MMC was doing that, so they kind of took. Like, you know what, we need to start, like, stepping up our game. And so that's where, like, I think they completely redesigned the Grimlock. Um, mm. So. And then I, uh, Planet X has, re- has announced theirs, too. So I'm sure, you know, I, I don't know what the deal is with that. but Yeah, I mean, it's interesting to see MMC start to get some competition in that line. But. Yeah. I don't know where the updated renders are for MMC if they've released them, but I can't find them. I just they they have it. Wow. They've just We've talked about SXX, it. SXX um, Hot Flame for years. That's competition right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually like the look of Essex S one better because he's got that yeah. more thin light. The look is a design. lot better. That toy is a poop biscuit. Yeah, yeah that's... That's, that's what kept me away from it. I was like, I know MMC does good work. It's not as perfect in the look, but it's going to be okay, such a much better toy. It's good, but Hot Flame is just hot poop. <laughs> I own him, if you can't tell. <laughs> I made the choice to get him instead of Kaladis. Me and you I'm were going to go split. the Flame Toys route online. That's a much better idea. You at least know what you're getting. Like, eight hours of torture. I, uh, like I handled Anna's... Uh, Why would you buy a model side. kit if you don't enjoy them? Yeah, I like, enjoy do model enjoy models. them. Not I just hot don't flame enjoy model, flame toys. Flame toys, yeah. Uh, okay. Flame toys model kits are not they, fun. They look great when they're done. They're a horrible assembly experience. Other companies, they make good model kits. Yes. Flame toys. Not so much. Not so much. They look nice and they play well they do. when they're done. They do. Little bit of glue, and they're great, but... Ooh. All right, so it sounds like Christian's going to wait and see what repaints come out. Yes, I'm Me convinced too. on the figure, not on this version of it. So what about you, Anna? I, I want to wait for weird repaints, too. I'm really hoping they make yeah. something totally bizarre, like the Batman. Like, that's, <laughs> that would be fine by me. Like, I just they'll, didn't really make like it be the Bane. toy for the Batman, but... So that's why I didn't buy it. I didn't buy it because I didn't like the Batman idea. The Batman idea was fantastic. But, um, yeah, I, any random superhero I would be in for. When Icon is in Ashes, then you have my permission to die. <laughs> yeah, um, if they take up on your uh, Fire Guts version, like, they'd have to screw up that deco for me not to really be tempted to double dip. I'd probably do which, that, too. I think I would I do Fire Guts. Yeah. It's pretty. Yeah, it's I, so pretty. Please, please note, I, I haven't heard any rumors. I know nothing. Yeah. It's yeah. just, no, we're making things up. That. That's it's, it's a do. primary paint. And Although, if you they're know what making the... orange stuff, like they did, they, they, I think the orange color they often use is very good. But if they're doing orange stuff, I still want to see representative wing thing. 
I would consider buy that. the rep ad. Give me the orange one. I, I I don't like that mold very much, but I would buy it just because it's orange and I get to see Wien Thane more and watch Christian look upset. Words I never all thought. The other things. Words I never thought I would say. All the other wing I have enough wing things in my collection. <laughs> Twenty twenty one people. No, it's I getting have overwhelmed. Several, I have several wing things. How did that happen? How did that happen? I Moon pies. <laughs> at this point, it's something like four or five, right? That's a lot of wing things. It is. I have two. Oh, I I just remembered this. We didn't point this out, Lucas. You're not gonna be able to see it on my shitty webcam with poor lighting. But on the back, when you articulate the leg, like the back of his leg, like has a piece oh, yeah. that flexes and shifts in, and yeah, it just makes that. it feel like a robot, and it's yeah. awesome. <laughs> um, but you know what? The, honestly, the first repaint is going to be some sort of black deco. Let's be oh, honest. Oh yeah, it has I to. I don't be. care about you know, that. Will it be Nemesis or Nucleon Quest or mm. Reverse Convoy? You know what name will they throw on it? Um, who knows? You know, I think after that, probably a shattered glass version is most likely. You know, like if I was running a company and you said we need to repaint some fi- repaint some prime figures, that's the order I would go. Right, um, yeah, for sure. And they've done shattered glass for other stuff too. So, yeah. Um, but uh, I was going to mention tomorrow night uh, we have oof my wallet, uh, and it's going to be a big one. I, I believe that they're going to try to get their oofiest. Um, it's the weirdest things. Yeah, you I like thought. to call them obscurios. It's a mixture of obscure and curio. And I think it's going to be a um, a big cast. I think I think Paul's like everyone. Everyone Paul's trying to get all of us on there. Yes. Yeah. You know, like you know, normally we try to keep it to four or five people, and he's just like, nope, out the window for his last show. He's going to get everyone. So if you don't watch a lot of uh, OMW. Um, definitely try to tune in tomorrow night at least. It should be fun. Because this one's going to break all the rules and make all the messes that it's going to be a disaster that you'll We're enjoy. We're going to talk over each other constantly. Probably. Break. So is it going to be like the three hour spectacular? Can... No, I hope not. I will not be on it for three hours. <laughs> I don't like spectaculars. <laughs> Uh, I was also going to mention Book Club on Sunday night is going to be Dark Cybertron chapters one through three. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Got to the back. It's part of the story. You have to read it. I've never understood the hate for Dark Cybertron. I mean, it's I not like amazing, it. but it's fine. It's not that bad. It's better than the current stuff. So. The, the it's problem with way better than the current stuff. I feel the like I know the Dark... end of Dark Cybertron, so I think I've read it. Maybe. <laughs> The problem with Dark Sabatron is that it's obviously not an editorial decision. It was a mandate from Hasbro to do an event, and Hasbro stepped in and it juts out like a sore thumb. Yeah. And like especially with more than meets the eye, and that's why they later had some events and they allowed more than meets the eye to ignore it. Like not that it, it didn't happen or anything, it's just like they don't have to participate in it. Yeah, you know? but it allowed more than meets the eye to pick up some new cast members, which was cool. Yeah, I, James Roberts is a great writer and did the managed to do some good things with it it's still not good <laughs> and that's the problem if it didn't come from hasbro i think it would have been a natural thing and it would have been better but you'll find out and make your own opinions so. yeah i will <laughs> and you can tune in on sunday to see what those opinions are yeah other people should join in it's a great place to jump in ha 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 hey if you start at dark cybertron it can only get better <laughs> Um, thanks to everyone in the chat tonight. Uh, Catherine, Randall, uh, Phil, Nick, uh, Ron. Ron there, yeah. So, um, yeah, so I appreciate <laughs> it, guys. And we will see you next week.